everyone, Sophia here, my great challenger. Welcome back to my Etsy shop, Frenchie and Tubby. I am going to show you or feature seven items going in the shop tomorrow, and that would be February 23rd, 2024. I have brass, porcelain, crystal, and pottery to share with you today. Let me start with the first one, and that would be the item that's in the thumbnail, and it's fabulous. <laughs> This is a biscuit jar by um, Mikasa. The pattern is Park Lane. And I'm gonna put a picture right here of the stemware that goes with it because you probably have seen this very famous stemware from Mikasa. Um, this is from the 80s. The, the pattern is from 87 all the way up to 2000. Um, and it's a biscuit jar. So obviously it's for cookies, right? Comes with a lid. Did you hear that? It's crystal, uh, cut crystal. It's absolutely stunning. And this thing is in perfect condition. Not a chip, not a scratch, nothing. What a statement piece to put on the console or, you know, I mean, if you really want to put cookies in it, go ahead. I personally would put chocolate, covered chocolates, um, you know, like Rocher's, Ferrero, or uh, even Kisses, and put that on a console, coffee table, uh, a mentor of sorts. It's fabulous. <laughs> it looks amazing. What I like about it is that the lid is actually inside the uh, um, main component, so there's no chance of it falling. See what I mean? It's really in by about a half an inch. Now you can also use this as a vase if you want. You're not stuck with a cookie jar, right? Um, but it's beautiful. It, it's one of the most recognizable Mikasa patterns because it's very unusual. So it has this kind of like cathedral uh, cut right here at the bottom and then it just moves up in stripes. Very art deco if you ask me, um, but it's timeless really as a pattern. It's beautiful. It's about eight inches tall with the lid and it's six wide. Uh, so it's a nice size, perfect for chocolates. Easter's coming perfect for chocolate okay Mikasa Park Lane cookie jar and by the way if uh, you're wondering where did this come from it's actually featured in tomorrow's thrift with me video so you will see me source it at the Goodwill um, another piece I would keep okay but I'm trying my very best to stay business like all right um, next item Okay, my next item on the subject of Easter is this stunning, uh, it's really beautiful. It's an Andrea by Sidek um, ceramic porcelain pitcher and it's called lavender, obviously, um, because of the lavenders that are uh, all around. It's a pot belly, also a melon shape. You can tell by this, you know, kind of cut pattern it has the sticker underneath it beautiful handle this got a nice grasp to it it's a beautiful picture um, again you know you can serve an actual beverage with it or use it as a vase imagine this with actual lavenders it would be stunning on the um, kitchen island wow or put utensils in it uh, the green has the trim all around the spout right here it's a beautiful spout very nice um, pour on it and again the handle is nice because it's got that little uh notch right here so you can put the rest of your hand you see how i'm holding it so it you get a good grasp no chance you're going to drop this it's in pristine condition almost brand new out of the box it's seven and a quarter uh tall uh, so it's not super big but it's also not a tiny little pitcher um i would say it's got about a pint and a half if not more in it worth of liquid. Let me give you close-ups on it so you can see it a little bit better. It's really elegant. Very British looking, isn't it? Now, for those of you who don't know, um, Sedek is actually the uh, maker. Andrea by Sedek is a line that Sedek started and Andrea is his daughter. So he started a line uh, from four and um, about his daughter. So every time you see something that says Andrea by Sidek is part of the lines that he did um, with his daughter who took over the company at a later time. It's beautiful. 
Now, how old is this? Not very old. They started those in 2004, so it's really early 21st century. Beautiful nonetheless. Uh, some people say it's rare. I don't think it was a limited edition, uh, but you know, sometimes you have to be careful with what's up there. It's, I mean, look at the bottom. Not even stained, nothing. I think this was in a curio. Uh, I doubt that somebody actually put orange juice in it or anything. Somebody got it as a gift, put it in a curio, and that was that. Um, I hope you get to use it though, because we're on the uh, kick right now where we start using our stuff. Andrea Bicetic, beautiful ceramic, um, gorgeous glaze on it, super high gloss, lavender pitcher. Next is this super cute <laughs> little crystal vase, another Mikasa. Uh, this one is from 1995. It is called Petit Point. And let me see if I can show you the design on it. And I'm hoping uh, you can see the design on it. It's a very pretty, delicate vase. It's perfect for a nightstand or even a little bathroom console if you have one of those uh, or on your bathroom vanity for instance very nice a crystal made in Slovenia from 1995 I love this Ugh. I'm struggling to not keep everything I swear I really am um, but anyway so Mikasa beautiful okay next brass My next item is really different, and that's another one you're going to see me pick um, in tomorrow's video. This is, I just polished it. <laughs> in the video, it's all black, um, but I wanted to polish it to show it and showcase it. This is a 1960s solid brass vase. It was made in India. Um, they refer to the pattern as Art Deco. It's basically a shell, but yes, it does, you know, I mean, if you think about it, the 80s had a lot of patterns like this too, but this is a vintage one from the 60s, so we're going to say that it's a reference to um, Art Deco. The interesting thing about it, other than the half shell design that's in the front and in the back, is that it's super slim. It's eight by eight, so it's eight tall, eight wide, but it's only two inches um, depth. And then look at the mouth. It's fairly narrow. So this is for very long, I would say exotic type uh, foliage or dry foliage, or if you want to keep it just as a decorative item. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, you have to probably polish it on occasion. Um, I cleaned it up. I didn't do a, a super professional job. You can see that I still have a little bit of tarnish right here at the bottom, but I think that's all right. It still is really intriguing and unusual. Now, I always use the, uh, um, the little phrase, it's a conversation piece whenever, or a statement piece whenever I find something like this, because it's the kind of thing that people will see on a shelf, um, you know, maybe by a, in, a, in a TV entertainment center, when they come to your house and they say, hey, what's this? That's interesting looking. Like, it is interesting looking. Solid brass. It's heavy. Um, brass is really in. I don't know if you've noticed. If you go on Etsy and other shops or if you go to antiques uh, market or flea markets, you're going to see a lot of brass. Brass is something that people gravitate towards right now. Uh, so it's the perfect time to um, grab a statement piece like this. It's a nice vase, very feminine and again, very narrow. So you can use it just as a sculpture, as a decorative item. You don't even have to use it as a vase. I would say this is really cool. Eight by eight, very narrow. Um, I polished it actually quite well. I can see myself in it. Probably can see the camera in it too. Look at that. Neat. Next is this adorable Fenton Silver Crest candy dish. It's only six inches. It's very small. Another one that's perfect for Easter. You can put at least 30 Hershey Kisses in there. Um, we all know Silver Crest. I have another um, item of Silver Crest that's currently on the shelf. That's a two-tier. It's basically milk glass with 
clear glass that is uh, attached to it as they fire it and then they put it in the mold to do the uh, uh, ruffle crimple on it it's very neat now this is the one of their most popular um, pattern or color the silver crest they actually started it in the 40s I believe in 1942 and they made it all the way up to the 80s so that is one of the longer standing pattern very highly recognizable silver crest by Fenton high quality glass look at this thing you see the little white contrast with the clear on the edges of the ruffle that's the reason why it's called silver crest because the uh, clear picks up the colors that are on the outside and it makes it look silver so silver crest it's a tiny little dish it's same thing i always say you can use it as a catch-all perfect for jewelry on the vanity um we got to start repurposing items those were really meant for a formal living room little coffee table um, or side table next to a lamp with a couple of candies your grandma probably had those little italian candies that are individually wrapped that were in there i don't know where you find them uh today but these were delicious anyway fenton silver crest tiny little dish okay when i come back two more The next item you saw me pick uh, in my last video, it's very interesting. This is by Two Potters. It started as Two Potters and now it's Becca Webb, who's a potter in Vermont. And she actually um, does her pottery with a wood fire kiln, uh, which is old fashioned. This is part of her mason jar collection. And it's called like this if you look at it it's because it's got that screw top here and some of the smaller pieces actually do come with a lid that you would screw on like a mason jar the glaze on this is gorgeous it's that um celadon very similar to corian pottery green but it's also a gradient so it has a very pale almond green and goes into that celadon sea foam type green in the front here but the inside gets really interesting look at the inside it's got this two-tone um i would say sienna color and beige and it's really cool she had different sizes in this particular collection not just one on the website she no longer sells those she has them now in a brownish beige color, but the green one like this can't find it. So this is, I guess, a discontinued item. Um, it's not vintage because it's a fairly new pottery, at, I would say maybe in the last 20 years. But it's a really, really neat item. This is great in a bathroom for all of you hair accessory or if you uh, have a lot of samples, you put them in there. Or you can keep it in the kitchen and put herbs in it. I can see it with a cloth top, you know, with a ribbon. Um, and then you would keep herbs or salt, make it a salt cellar. So many things you can do with this. It's really, really neat. It's got a modern feel to it. It's not everybody's taste, but I like the shape. And just to recreate mason jar type designs in pottery to me is really cool so this is the two potters and it has the stamp two potters right here at the bottom and it's a mason jar bowl um yeah you could use it as a bowl too why not why not i like it probably would keep that too yikes <laughs> i'm hopeless okay one more item last item you saw me pick those um uh, in the last video they are this uh glass very thick coffee um cups so you can do eggnog with them though the floral pattern on it is more like tropical they are hibiscus flowers so you can do uh coffee or you can do um eggnog or you can do a uh, fruit punch um they're not demi-tasse they're a little bit taller than a demi-tasse 
but they're also much smaller than a regular coffee cup. They are by KSA, it says KSA at the bottom. They're from the 70s and KSA is Kurt Adler. So it's quite interesting because I didn't know that Kurt Adler actually did designs as early as the 70s. And I don't know if you can see the hibiscus flowers um, on it. It's all around. This is cool. Um, a lot of people actually enjoy seeing any colored liquid in a glass like this. So if you were doing a cafe latte, cappuccino, you know, you have your shot of espresso, then your hot milk, then you uh, froth on top, and then you start, and then you start mixing it. You get you get to see all the different colors. Uh, this is pressed glass. He had different patterns. He did ones for Christmas. He did some with roses. This is the hibiscus, and I have four of them. One, two, <clears throat> three, four, and they're in really good shape. Um, but you know, it's pressed glass. It's not crystal. And that is my last item. So all of these items will be in the shop tomorrow at 5 p.m. Um, and then I have a video coming up tomorrow of the latest thrifting that I did for sourcing those items. Um, and I went to two shops. I went to the Goodwill in Bordentown, New Jersey. And the other one is my regular um willing hearts and i did find quite a few items some of them are actually into this video and that would be the uh, mikasa park lane cookie jar biscuit jar uh this fabulous <laughs> fabulous uh brass vase and i believe you also see me uh sourcing this one um everything else will be coming up in march so i hope you enjoyed this i hope you're looking forward to these items uh, where would I keep? Definitely this, the cookie jar. I think it's phenomenal. I really like it. And I'm trying to uh, think. I, I would not keep the Silver Crest. It's one of those where you need more than one. And I, I really don't want to start a new collection. Um, but I think I would probably keep this because this is just too cool to pass. So I hope somebody grabs it real quick uh, again brass is in right now so that would be my seven items the link to the shop is up here and down below i will see you next week thank you for watching and as always thank you for supporting my little shop frenchy and tubby and sharing my passion for vintage and antiques i'll see you later thanks for watching bye